Hello there, you're welcome to CNR Extra on City TV. My name is Nana Tufo Boateng. Coming up. President Kufuado sacks Dom Kwabinya MP Sarah Ajwasafo as Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection. Also, Speaker of Parliament defers ruling on MP for Dom Kwabinya Sarah Ajwasafo's absenteeism. In the circumstances, I will urge this House for us to call it a day. On return, on return, I will deliver the written ruling. Still ahead, Member of Parliament for Lower Manya Krobo denies claims by the Electricity Company of Ghana that he connected power to his private residence in the area illegally. There. It is only when I go there sometimes Saturday morning or Friday evening. So there's no reason, I mean, there's no reason why I would do illegal connection. It was only yesterday that they reported to the uh, only. And later, High Court dismisses a $10 million defamation suit brought before it by a former trade and industry minister, Dr. Echo Spiel Gabra, against the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Bernard M. Chibuesiako, popularly known as Chairman Wuntumi. We disagree with the decision because we feel that it goes against the weight of evidence that was adduced in the court. And so the instructions that we have is to file an immediate appeal against the decision. Grateful that you could join us. Before we go into our first story, let me introduce and welcome Duke Mensa Opoku to the show. Duke, it's your first time here. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good to be here. Yeah, trust you well. Yeah, I'm well. Well, you have been in Parliament and, of course, all, I mean, all the, the back and forth, the debate around in Sarah Joa stuff. We're going to go in there. But yeah. last night, we saw a statement from the Communications uh, Department or Office of the Jubilee House mm -hmm. uh, announcing the revocation of the appointment of Adjoasa for as Minister for Gender, Children yeah. and Social Protection. Uh, for many, it's it, it even delayed. For mm. many, I mean, if you did a cash you look at views mm. that or opinions that were expressed at the breaking of the news on social media and others, mm. people say, well, it's been long overdue. I, I mm. thought that, I mean, initially when Adjoasa was taking mm. the leave of absence, we yeah. were also notified by a letter Exactly. That yeah. she had written to mm. the presidency and the chief of staff had granted her the permission to mm. actually go and attend to Personal the other matters, issues, which yeah. we now know has got to do with their children in mm. the United States. So at a time when there was piling up pressure, mm. increasing pressure mm. from November last year up until mm. now, many thought that she would have even resigned. Mm. For me, I think that uh, she should have resigned mm. because if you are still, we, and we don't know if whether she went on a leave with pay or leave without, without pay. Because yeah. that ex that within the exactly. structure that exists. Well, before we even yeah. go into that and look at the timing of her yeah. sack, uh, yeah. we have a clip on the sacking of Ajasa for as Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection.
the president has um, sacked the minister for ja um, gender, um, Adrasa, for a statement from the Jubilee House Communications Directorate has details of that. Yeah. Indeed, Vivian. It says, in accordance with Article 81A of the Constitution, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Dudankwe Kufado, has revoked the appointment of Honorable Sarah Drasafo, Member of Parliament for Dom Kwabinya, as Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection with immediate effect. The Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Madam Cecilia Abnadapa, will continue to act as Caretaker Minister for the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection until such a time that President Kufuadu appoints a substantive minister. So there were some details there uh, as per the yeah. statement signed by Eugene Ahin, who heads the mm -hmm. communication directorate of the presidency. Uh, but, I mean, we're looking at the timing of the revocation or the sack. Yeah. And uh, then again, you're also wondering, I mean, she, she applied for a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. Then she applied for an extension yeah. of same. Yeah. The extension, do we know till when, or was it an indefinite extension for which reason today she's been sacked? That's for the period we didn't know. Mm. We didn't know as to when um, that extension ended or terminated, mm. or what the content of the request for extension even, even mm. until. We know that that extension did not only go to the chief of staff. There was that extension also in parliament, because mm. she wrote to the speaker mm. asking for permission because ordinarily that's what she should have done in the first place mm. which is what brought about all of these absenteeism yeah. and privileged conversations of privileged committee mm. proceedings because if you had written to the speaker to ask for permission before leaving the jurisdiction uh, we wouldn't have these 15 days mm. uh, that essentially she breached mm -hmm. way into the 40 days that got her onto the uh, onto the privileges the committee, committee for the for the kind of mm. proceedings that uh, if we should do, she did mm. not appear anyway, mm. uh, which, 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 which we saw. So for mm. me, I think that uh, the president has the power to appoint and yeah. disappoint. He is the appointee. Yeah. So if at this point in time, mm. he thinks that the extension can no longer be extended mm. and that the appointment has to be revoked. Mine is not the first time we've had a, there was, mm. we had a, um, we had a gender minister, Otiku, yeah, who decided that, that yes, mm. She was given a position, I think she was uh, given an ambassadorial role yeah. in Italy. And she mm. said she cannot she because of yeah. family reasons. Yeah. So this is not the first time we're having something mm. like that. So if, if I think that, I mean, for a woman of her for standing in mm. our politics, mm. I mean, she entered very early, very young uh, lawyer. Uh, mm. She's from a very prominent Ghanaian family, right. uh, Apostle Safo's family. Mm. And if with, the, with, with, with her quick rise in in, a, in, in politics, mm. right from her days in parliament on the, as deputy ranking member on foreign affairs mm. to that's when the MPP was in opposition to her work, the work that her team did. And a lot of people forget this. Mm. The work that Adria Safo and her team did in 2012 during the elections is what formed the basis, the cracks of what was the MPP's evidence that they took yeah. to the election petition exactly, yeah, in the 2012, Supreme Court. the Supreme yeah. Court. It started from Dom Kwabinya. Dom Kwabinya. Yeah. That's how it started. Mm. So this is someone who was her own merit and, and a lot of young people in the party look up to her. Right. For, from rising all the way to become deputy majority, majority leader. leader no, late, no, yeah. no, 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 that, that position has never been held by any female. woman. In a yeah. female, in a, in a, a, Repub a sec uh, fourth, fourth Republican Republic. dispensation. Mm. She's the only person who has done that. Mm. Ro rose to that. Many people say she was not happy that she, that position was taken away from, from her, her and she was taken to the gender ministry. Mm. Gender ministry is a, is, is a good thing. It's in Ghana mm. that we don't really look at that. Uh, yeah, but if, if you look, look at, at the sensitivity mm, of yeah. that ministry and this long absence, of I mean, course. we've had a caretaker minister, but really, um, if you look at the effectiveness or the efficiency of a sitting a, a, a minister who is available and resourceful and effective, I mean, her absence really has cost us a, a, a great deal, hasn't of it? Of course, there's, yes. Mm. I mean, there are a lot of issues in the, in the gender, gender ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Street children, I mean, just recently they were in the news for mm. the deportation of the Nigerians, the Nigerians back to the yeah. street, streetism, mm. begging, yeah. our social welfare system. Exactly, there's the leap and the all leap, that. All those yeah. issues are serious issues, mm. which I think with her expertise, she would have brought all of that to bear, the legal background and, and exactly. all of that would have, yeah. as somebody who, yeah. who started, she worked also at Legal Aid. Yeah. In her, I yeah. think that's where she did her national service. Mm. Legal Aid is also one of the social vulnerable mm. pro, uh, social programs for the vulnerable mm. in terms of the law. So she, she sort of had all the qualifications mm. to do this. And then family, family strikes. People are 
uh, alleging all sort of things. Mm. But those ones we don't have evidence, so yeah. we can't we can't talk about that. Mm. But I'm, but the point I I I am making is that I felt she should have resigned Clearly. rather than for the yeah. president to revoke that. And and for many who think the president mm. took so much time yeah. in in doing he due to things that we, we do not. we yeah. do not know. But of course. This situation, this decision could have been taken mm. earlier. earlier. And for me, yeah. for someone like Hadra mm. Safo, I'm not so happy that she had had to be pushed away from government mm. or sacked or her appointment revoked. Once the issue was becoming much more difficult, she should have just said, I can't do this anymore. Mm. Especially looking at the kind of challenges. Mm. Her very first decision she took mm. at the ministry suffered a pushback from the presidency. Yeah. That was her decision to relieve Madame Gertrude Kwashiga yeah. of her position as. Uh, the school feeding, the school feeding uh, program coordinator. Yeah. That's also another huge aspect exactly. of the gender ministry. Yeah. School yeah. feeding. When the caterers start, mm -hmm. <laughs> we know the kind of exactly. running battles <laughs> they went into with, with, with Otiko. Yeah. When the caterers start the Awahala mm -hmm. and you are not a that strong, strong person with that kind of push, yes, to we'll be able to exactly. mix uh, 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 brain and brawn yeah. to be able to push across what you have to do, mm. that's going to be a problem for you. So, right. I, 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 for me, it's a good decision, mm -hmm. but I, I, I wish. It had been taken earlier or mm -hmm. Adjoa Safo herself had resigned had honorably. honorably and, and, and right. And Let, let's still stay with Adjoa, but this time let's go yeah. oh, to the legislature where we understand uh, the ruling on whether or not to declare her seat vacant has been deferred. Speaker of Parliament has deferred a decision on the Privileges Committee report on the matter of the three absentee MPs, including Dobby Kwabenya MP Sarah Adjoa Safo. Now, even before the report could be considered, a preliminary matter was raised as to whether Parliament should consider the report or the position of the Privileges Committee for the seat to be declared vacant should be operative. Well, this matter was argued out by the majority and minority leaders and two other MPs. The Privileges Committee, by a majority decision, had determined that the seat should be declared vacant while the minority was against that, indicating that Adra Safo should be given the opportunity to provide reasons for her absence from Parliament. Now, the Speaker indicated that he required time to deliver a written and reasoned ruling on the matter at hand. We have more on this report. The report of the committee was laid on Monday. The motion for the report to be taken was tabled, but before that, the majority leader raised a preliminary concern asking that the report should be given automatic effect and for Adra Safu's seat in Dom Kwabenya to be declared vacant. This the minority leader did not agree with. He advanced arguments against that position. I've already found out that the maximum period the speaker could allow a member of parliament to absent himself from parliament is 15 days. It is unacceptable for Parliament to grant a leave of absence longer than envisaged under Article 971C of the Constitution and the standing orders of Parliament. I find that it was unlawful for Parliament to grant the Honourable Member of Parliament indefinite leave of absence. So whatever we are doing today, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying let's be guided by the 1992 Constitution, our standing orders, and the precedent. Mr. Speaker, my disappointment, my disappointment is President Nana Adudankwa. Even this, he should fire the minister. If you are a minister and you are not at post for long, which one must precede what? No, no, no. But this parliament, as I've said, the speaker. Speaker, the speaker. there is no way in this constitution how a member of parliament can be removed. Maybe we'll go to the provisions on how the speaker is removed and learn from it, but it's for good reason. You don't take, oh, you can take decisions no, yesterday. Speak speaker. I'm speak saying, Mr. Head. Speaker, I'm surprised that Nana Adudankwa is not showing wit and will in dismissing the absentee minister. Why will you be keeping an absentee minister and thinking that you find comfort in parliament dismissing and declaring the seat vacant. So, Mr. Speaker, let the leader come clear and we'll know his intentions and we'll fight his intentions. The majority leader after that reinforced his view. Committees of this house have the authority in these three specific areas to carry on what is required of them, the authority that they have been clothed in by the Constitution. So, my colleague is totally out of sorts with the greatest respect to him. 
is my friend, and he sounded that he was going to use hard language. Mr. Speaker, I believe I've restrained myself in not using hard language. I've been very circumspect, but I believe that I'm right. It's totally wrong. So, Mr. Speaker, the point I'm making is that this motion ought not to have been listed for the House to approve of the report of the Privileges Committee. That is totally an absurdity. That is it. So, Mr. Speaker, that is the legal position. And I challenge him to, 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 to use the Constitution to disprove what I'm saying. Mr. Speaker, he quoted the standing orders. I will suggest to him that, yes, the standing orders is supposed to be a product of the Constitution. But between the standing orders and the Constitution, the Constitution takes precedence. You should know that. The Speaker, after hearing from two other MPs, took a break and returned with his verdict. The committee has to demonstrate to this House that the person, the person was given the opportunity to exercise reasonable explanation and the person did not provide reasonable explanation. Now this House has to be transparent. We need to debate it. We need to access it. So if the report is not to this House, for us to consider, to debate, to interrogate. Even, Mr. Speaker, if we're not even going to vote on it, at least we must debate it and examine the reasonableness of the conclusion of the committee. It cannot be that the committee will just meet and then make a recommendation to the Speaker. It doesn't say so. It doesn't say a recommendation to the Speaker. It says the committee concludes that the person is unable to that provide reasonable explanation to the committee. So, Mr. Speaker, we plead that let's follow our own standing orders, which says that a report of the committee must come to us, a recommendation should be made to us, and if a recommendation is made to us, naturally, we must take a decision on the recommendation. Mr. Speaker, on that note, I will urge you to reject this application, reject this application before you, that a business that you have endorsed and which has been captured on the other paper should be struck out. Mr. Speaker, we, 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 we urge you to reject the application of the majority leader on this matter. Thank you. The matter, the solution of, for the issue, Mr. Speaker, that is arisen lies in your interpretation of the sea. So all these debates, Mr. Speaker, wouldn't arise. And it's this, Mr. Speaker, it says this, that the Speaker, okay, if the person is absent without permission in writing, the Speaker, uh, to writing of the Speaker, and he is unable to offer explanation to the Parliamentary Committee on Privileges from 15 sittings of the meeting of Parliament, Mr. Speaker, it would appear to me uh, to say that as soon as that critical landmark is hit, the matter resides in the Parliamentary Committee of, uh, 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 of uh, Privileges. Mr. Speaker, so it is for you really, Mr. Speaker, as far as my understanding is concerned this matter, to look critically at this. If you decide that, yes, this is what the Constitution says, all this debate, all this, as well, Mr. Speaker, it has not arise. The matter now rests in your motion. If we accept that the explanation or the critical interpretation of Mr. Speaker, they see, is embedded in those few, in those few critical words. That seems to me to be the way forward. Because if that is the case, then we wouldn't be arguing, they wouldn't have the opportunity. It is for you, Mr. Speaker, to make the critical uh, decision based on the wording of Mr. Speaker. Those are my words. I have consulted the old lady. The old lady has given me an advice, and I think that advice is correct, because the issue raised by the majority leader is both of substantive and procedural law, and I need time to submit to this House a reasoned, written ruling. I cannot, in the haste of today, give you the ruling. 
in the circumstances, I will urge this house for us to call it a day. And on return, on return, I will deliver the written ruling. In a similar development, civil society group Odikro is calling on the House to declare the seats of 33 MPs vacant for also breaching the rule on absenteeism. Still in the House, the minority accused Bost of constructing a twin tower edifice at an inflated cost of $78 million as against the initial figure of $39 million. We continue to monitor and prevent the looting and plundering of scarce resources of this nation. This is a time government has been crying and complaining that it cannot even get money to pay salaries. And yet, we have state agencies under this administration pardoning contracts, inflating contracts to the tune of about 100%. This is unacceptable. This is unfortunate. This is inimical. And we, on the minority, would use everything within our midst to ensure that we address this challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, I have all the documents for you, and I will give you the documents. For instance, this is a May 20, 2022 document from the Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company. They applied to PPA for a contract of $24 million. It stated here, $24 million. The PPA then responded and approved $39 million. How come? The boss has done his own assessment, interacted with the consultant, decided that it should be 24 million, only for the approval to turn out to be 39 million. If this is not a scandal, what else is it? But MP for Doma East contends that the minority's claim is false. Which document is my brother John Jenapo speaking to? That is $78 million. This, this morning, I mean, we've seen tracking, and they were saying, what? They are saying they will continue to be vigilant. Were you vigilant in 2015 when we lost $475 million at Bost? Were they vigilant? Clearly, ladies and gentlemen, whatever honorable ranking member, the member of parliament and a senior member, of course, said this morning is totally unacceptable and is powerful force. You can verify, and I've given you reference to every document that I've stated here, that BOSS is undertaking a single block project, which costs $23.5 million. And then maybe I have a calculator here. Somebody can put in 23 times, 23 times 2. If it gives us 78. I don't know if we are arithmetically too, we are having challenges in there. There seems to be no end, at least in sight, for the time being, in relation to the vexed matter of whether the Dom Kwabinya seat will be declared vacant or not. The Speaker has asked for more time to make a determination on the matter. This could mean at least three months, because as Parliament goes on recess today, the next time the House would reopen its doors to business by members may well be in October when the House comes back for the budget meeting for the year. Reporting for City News from Parliament, my name is Chief Mentor Poku. Well, I mean, we know that Parliament, uh, I mean, they are masters of their own law, but yes. perhaps you, you are in there as our correspondent. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can help us understand yeah. why the Constitution is clear on what should happen or, or, or tells us clearly how a member vacates his or her seat and yet we are having this merry-go-round with respect to Ajua Safu. The law thrives on dispute. Mm. That's what the, that's no, the granted, thing say. granted. The law thrives granted. on dispute. So, that's why people invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court mm -hmm. and Article 21 and Article yeah. 131 for interpretation of, of the Constitution. Yeah. Even though it's English. Yeah, I mean, clearly. <laughs> Even though it's English, I mean, uh, written. 97 but one. The, it but gives the, you but oh, yes. the conditions or but circumstances. The position, the position mm. of even a comma, a punctuation mark. Yeah in the constitution can be a subject of constitutional litigation at the courts. Mm -hmm. you, you, Clearly you might the change the yes. understanding or even the yes, context yes, of yes. a sentence. In yes, the, so, mm. uh, I mean, you have, if you, if you read a legal text, there are so many 
one issue. Mm. I mean, just I, I won't. I, I'm not digressing. Mm. Just an ex, just one example. There is a case in in in, in constitutional law, Chief Tensi, a jam mm. and the, against the Republic, where just the position of a comma mm. in relation to what Chief Tensi is, mm. Article Two Seventy of the Constitution, which talks about Chief Tensi, just where the comma is. It's a subject of a vigorous debate. That, that ruling was delivered by Justice Dateba. Mm. And there's a commentary, blistering commentary written by Professor Kumado on the same issue. Right. And the two basically mm. disagree mm. because of the position of the comma. Exactly. Mm. So that is where, that's, 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 that's how the law is. Mm. So even though the constitution in Article 97.1 is clear, yeah. very clear, the constitution and mm. the law also work within certain framework, which I, which for me has essentially been the argument of the minority. Mm. So, because we are a common law country, there are common law principles that we follow. Apart from the common law principles, there's also judicial precedent, mm. which, 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 or the mm. uh, or the doctrine of stare decisis, which, which we follow, and that's essentially the argument that they've been making. So, the minority mm. has been arguing that, even though. Article 97.1 is instructive. Mm. If you are going to interpret it purposively... And 97.1c specifically speaks yes. to Ajua But issue. if you are going to interpret 97.1c mm. purposively, mm. you need to take into account other, the social context and other matters mm. to interpret not just the, not just the what is written there. Not mm. just, you don't just use the mischief, the literal rule or the mm. mischief rule. A positive approach requires that you take. So, for instance, but, but you see, they are, are we going to do law in parliament and then it's, the it's, people it's, of Dom Carbonia denied house, representation? It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a house that uh, is a lawmaking chamber. It is. So, but I mean, are we going so, to do so you, so, 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 article, so, so, and so, and the people of Dom Carbonia denied representation? But of course, you can't put uh, uh, something or nothing. Ex mm. nihilo nihilo fit. You can't put. Uh, there's, there, you have to build a certain basis mm. to take a decision, which is what occasioned the, the debate and the argument in mm. parliament. In parliament, I mean, yesterday. So for me, the minority is arguing natural justice. Right. That Adjua Safo, in, in there, embedded in there, in that Article 971C, mm. is the question of reasonableness, yeah. which is supposed to be determined mm. by the uh, uh, Privileges, Privileges Committee. Committee. And the argument is that that test of reasonableness has not been satisfied mm. because, because Adjua Safo has not appeared mm. before the committee for the committee to determine whether the reasons are tenable, are or, tenable not. or not. Mm. So we are talking about 97 ones, but embedded in 97 ones is the test of reasonableness, mm. which they argue that that test of reasonableness has not been met by way of addressable, not having before and, the And quality. that is uh, audio term mm. pattern, uh, mm. natural justice. Yeah. You, you get the point. Mm. But of course, audio term pattern works within a certain framework. Mm -hmm. So we can't say that you, you have been called to answer a matter. Mm. And in perpetuity, mm. because you have not answered to the matter. But you see, she's had should... three opportunities. That's the three that's... opportunities uh, nah, nah, to nah, appear nah, before nah, the nah, committee. Nah, nah, that's the argument I'm making. That because Adwa Safo has been given the opportunity, mm. and she has not taken it. And remember, the committee first of all decided to do normal service. Mm -hmm. So her office, yeah. her, her her pigeonhole in Parliament, yeah. her office in the constituency, mm. her PA. All of that. Mm. When that did not work, and the co the privileges committee is the court of parliament has mm. the when it sits has the powers yeah. of the court. Yeah. And based on that powers, mm. the chairman caused for a substituted service to, mm. to to be done, which was published in the newspapers and yeah. the rest. Mm. So on that basis, mm. even now, even now, you can serve someone by by WhatsApp, electronically, yeah. WhatsApp, Facebook, yeah. all of that. We wait to see what happens when the, when the house resumes or yes. comes back from. So it's a good seven. decision that has been mm. taken by the speaker. The speaker. A lot will mm. happen in three months. Mm. If Adwoa Safu wants to make, still mm. keep her seat, I think she should just make the necessary overture to the speaker, to the Clearly. committee, Clearly. that she's available mm. now. Clearly. Let's meet and have mm. a discussion before yeah. and, and present a supplementary mm. report when Parliament comes back. All right. We're well, going to take a break now, but uh, we want to hear from you. The WhatsApp number is 0550-585832. 0550-585832. Stay with us on CNR Extra when we return. Member of Parliament for Lower Manya Krobo denies claims by the electricity company of Ghana that he connected power to his private residence in the area illegally.
We'll bring you the details shortly. Don't go away. Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near you. This message has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Welcome back. This is CNR Extra on City TV. Let us know what you think. Uh, your comments or contributions are welcome via the WhatsApp number 0550-585832. We'll still dwell a bit more in Parliament, but this time on an individual MP and his constituency. And of course, issues having to do with illegal connection of power uh, from the ECG's lines, of course, to his residence in the Lower Manya Krobo municipality members of parliament and that for lower mania krobo ebenezer oklite telabi has denied claims by the electricity company of ghana that he has connected power to his private residence in the area illegally according to city news sources at the utility company the alleged illegality was detected during an exercise to verify claims that prepaid meters installed at the premises of the mp last saturday were stolen according to the public relations Office of the ECG in the Tema region, Sichuan Mensa. The MP has 72 hours to respond to the allegations leveled against him. He, but speaking to City News on the matter, said he has reported the issue to the police in the area since he suspected that my, place, my house, my, my residence had been disconnected. Yes, but the fact is that the, the ECG had installed prepaid meters in my house, which I did not kick against because I have always indicated that we would be paying our bills and we'll pay. The only thing that I have objected was the presence of the soldiers. But the meter was installed on Saturday and I left there Sunday evening. Sunday evening for a meeting in Accra on Monday. I had credit on it. I bought 250 worth of credit because, you know, during the week, I don't use anything there. It is only when I go there sometimes Saturday morning or Friday evening. So there's no reason, I mean, there's no reason why I would do illegal connection. It was only yesterday that they reported to the, uh, only yesterday. So I'm yet to go to the police myself, uh, but I'm sure they are doing their own investigation. But as I said, I suspect foul play. But then that is not the issue now. The issue is about how we should be paying our bills. And the ECG has decided. So I don't have any problem with that. But my, my only problem initially was the fact that soldiers had come there, which I did not understand. Because nobody had any discussion with me. Nobody told me why soldiers were coming. Because when the thing started in form, it was smooth. And uh, we didn't have any problem until the soldiers came in. And I said it was, it was raising tension. Well, the ECG appears to be very serious about... Um uh, yeah. th 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 this issue and of course um, power thefts and revenue losses due to power thefts yeah. and if they are to go on the trajectory they are on now to go a long way yeah. to help them recoup some of the lost monies yeah. and of course uh, meet certain targets yeah. and I think it's a step in the right direction it should be supported to do so I mean it, 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 it kind of excites me to know that they're actually taking on first they took on institutions mm -hmm. including Parliament yeah. uh, across sports stadium and now they are taking on individuals I mean uh, for want of a better word, big names such as the MP for Lower Manakoro. Yeah, people are, there are people asking if this has got to do, with, if this has got anything to do with the recent um, issues mm -hmm. in, in his Kobolan. constituency. Yeah. In Kobolan, which he has been a, a, a champion of mm -hmm. in Parliament, caused mm -hmm. 
done at least three statements in mm. Parliament on what is happening to his people in Krobo and calling for the Minister for Defence. Actually, got the Speaker to direct that the Minister should withdraw uh, 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 the men from, from, mm. from Krobo. Question is, is he the only MP involved in, in, uh, in, in, in power theft? Could mm. this be because he decided to speak against ECG and what they are doing in his constituency? Mm. I don't know. But the point I'm making is that it's good. If you look at all the, the chain, the value chain of, mm. of, of, of electricity mm. from generation, generation, the producers, to transmission, distribution. to distribution. Yeah. Distribution for a very long time mm. has been the weakest link. Exactly. It has been the weakest link because mm. of revenue losses. Yeah. They call something technical losses. They call, mm. there are so many issues that, technical names that they give they to give these to things. It. It's pure stealing of power. Yeah. If I use power and I don't pay, mm. I'm stealing the power. And mm. that is a situation that has bedeviled the ECG for a very long time. So every year, ECG at best, I mean, if you are comparing it to its competitors mm. across, I mean, uh, if you, if, even mm. Netco in Ghana, yeah. Yeah. which takes care of the northern, yeah, the northern, parts, the, the the northern parts of the country, mm. for you to even go and do the likes of ESCOM in South mm -hmm. Africa and co, yeah. it, it, it should be doing better than it's exactly. doing It's doing now. Mm. Because of all of these issues that we brought in, mm. PDS, PDS, which also turned into something else. <laughs> you you, 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 you yeah. get a point. So it's a good drive that they are on. Aggressive pursuit of people yeah. who are owing them, people who are still in power, power, to be able to recover mm. that. Because if we have a strong power mm. sector, hey, we are good to go. Mm. We, are, we are good. Uh, because continent-wide, mm. in the whole of Africa, Ghana is one of the countries with the highest levels of electricity penetration. Mm. The connectivity, I think we're around 80%. All right. And, and every day in, day out, MPs, uh, the Minister for Energy comes to answer questions on MPs. Uh, yeah. and, mm. and that would cost money. Yeah. That would cost materials. Mm. That would cost transformers. Mm. That would cost the human resource, human resource yeah. offices. Mm. All of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the money that they need mm. to get before they do that. So for me, it's good. If it's, and even if it's the MP, mm. even if it's the president uh, in his private residence is not paying for power, but due <laughs> force of law, they should go against it. But mm. the MP, if he is right and the, uh, and the ECG is mm. trying to shut him down because of his recent advocacy about the activities in the Kobo area, he should sue them. Mm. Right. I mean, I think it's, it cuts either yes. ways. If the ECG have enough grounds or they think really they have evidence to show that the MP has been stealing mm -hmm. power, they should sue. Yes. And if the MP also thinks yes. that it's just a case of defamation because them. he's been loud about their dealings in his area, he should, should also go after them. Go after them. Yes. But I mean, ultimately, I think the ECG is doing something right yes. and they need to be supported. What I would wish is rather is them taking more advantage of technology yeah. in order to reduce, because you're, you're trying to reduce revenue losses. But then again, you are spending more to do same. True. And, I, and, and, and I'll share this. Around. I don't yeah. remember the last time I walked to a vendor to buy electricity. Exactly. Now you buy off your phone. For my phone, yes. Yeah. And, and for it's just that my, it has its challenges sometimes. For myself, <laughs> yeah, for my, myself and my flatmates, mm. we decided that we will not, mm. it's a waste of time. We will not do that. Right. So we've all decided we have the ECG app. Mm. We, buy, we buy with that. Mm. Why can they not do... There is this brilliant idea mm. that... Uh, um, Kwejopoku of the Institute of Energy mm. Policy suggests where they can zone the country into certain parts based mm. on electricity consumption and give it to sublet it to companies, companies private yeah, sector yeah. people who do the mm. distribution and take money for them. You know, it will make a lot of sense. Yes, yeah. even and PDS. Yeah. PDS with mm. all of its allegations of scandals and fraudulent mm. misrepresentation and all of yeah. that. The level of money e PDS was able yeah. to collect in the time that they, operated. they were they operated yeah. is, 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 is far, far more than what ECG could have been able to do. Mm. But once they change the name again, they are back to their, exactly. old, their <laughs> old ways. So who are they, who, who are they deceiving? Mm. Is it because when they become state, people just sit back, immediately the private person comes in mm. and becomes private motive. Mm. But, but, but essentially, there are things that we shouldn't even mm. think about, uh, uh, what do you call it, privatizing. Mm. The pu public goods, electricity, water, roads, even road roads, yeah. I agree in a certain part with, with, this, with this privatization. Mm. But such essential goods and services, services. water, electricity, mm. telephony to a certain extent, these things, if we have a proper market system that is working, mm. the state's hand should, should, should be 
the one guiding and providing Provide these them, things. Yeah. Because yeah. they are welfare products. Uh, let's make progress. Yeah. Let's make progress. Let's go to the Ashanti region. Uh, those uh, defamation suits in the High Court. We understand it's been dismissed. This was between uh, former Trade Minister uh, Dr. Ekosio Gabra as the complainant and uh, Chairman Wuntumi uh, <laughs> in there as the defendant. Kumasi High Court has dismissed a $10 million defamation suit brought before it by former Trade and Industry Minister Dr. Ekospio Gabra against the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, the MPP, Bernard H. Boisianko, popularly known as Chairman Wuntimi. Now, the court has also awarded a cost of 150,000 CDs against Dr. Spio Gabra. The legal team of Dr. Spio Gabra, however, tells City News they will appeal the decision and pursue the matter even up to the Supreme Court level if need be. City News' Bureau Chief for the Middle Belt, Edward Opomafo, reports. Dr. Spio Gabra filed the suit after Chairman Wuntumi made a comment on his Wuntumi TV and radio station in Kumase, where he allegedly described the plaintiff as a thief ahead of the 2020 general elections. Dr. Ekos Spio Gabra, aside from filing a suit against Chairman Wuntumi, also sued the media platform, Wuntumi Multimedia Company Limited. The plaintiff, Dr. Ekos Spio Gabra, and a defendant, Chairman Wuntumi, took turns and mounted a witness box where they were cross-examined. The Kumasi High Court has been hearing the matter since 2021. Dr. Spiogabra, appearing before the court, noted that a statement Chairman Wuntumi made about him was defamatory. It was uttered without caution in a malicious manner with an intent to cause damage and injury to his hard-earned global reputation. The plaintiff quantified the value of his global reputation as being in excess of $10 million, hence requesting that amount as compensation. During Chairman Wuntumi's cross-examination, he said he only interpreted a statement by a former NDC member of parliament, Inusa Fuseni, where he allegedly said many leading NDC members were thieves. Delivering the judgment on Thursday, 28 July 2022, the court ruled that Chairman Wuntumi's words on Dr. Spiogabra were not malicious. It also stated that it has dismissed the case because the reliefs being sought by the plaintiff were not substantiated. Reacting to this, the legal team of Dr. Ekos Gabra says it is disappointed in the verdict and is appealing the decision immediately. Lead lawyer for Dr. Spilgabra, Nick Papo Samuel Ado, tells City News they are also appealing against the decision to award a cost against his client. We disagree with the decision because we feel that it goes against the weight of evidence that was adduced in the court. And so the instructions that we have is to file an immediate appeal against the decision. And so you expect that, God willing, by tomorrow or Monday, that uh, notice of appeal will be filed and we'll vigorously pursue the appeal. We clearly are dissatisfied with the decision and we don't think that that decision should stand. What I'm trying to say that the, 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 from at least the conclusion that was read in court, the decision is that the statement made by uh, Mr. Wuntumi was not made malicious uh -huh. and that uh, the court did not believe that we had endorsed a substantive relief on our rate. So these are two things. Obviously, we, we found a rate in respect of defamation. And so we cannot disagree with any of the conclusions of the court. And if, if calling somebody a thief is not defamatory, then uh, we don't know what else is. So we are going to definitely file uh, an appeal, and then we take it from there. And the appeal will be immediate. So God willing, by Monday, we should have, we should have filed it, and then we get the process for the appeal running. So we are with the decision, we are not taking the decision lying down at all. The court has awarded a cost against us, and that is part of the of the things that we will have appeal. We'll be appealing against the decision, and we'll be appealing against the cost that we awarded as well. So we're appealing on two things. We're appealing the decision itself, we're appealing the cost that we awarded as well. Nick Pekbo Samuel Ado added that they will go to the Supreme Court if they have to, since they are firmly resolved. He says his client is determined to set an example with a case. For City News, I'm Edward Opon Marfo, Kumasi. 
So judging from that clip, uh, clearly two appeals are pending. <laughs> appeal against yeah. the ruling itself and appeal against the cost, the cost awarded, awarded against uh, Dr. Spio Gabra. But uh, really, I would want to see more of such cases being prosecuted in court so that really we'll have some sanity in on our airwaves. Space. Exactly. That's true. That's true. And you see, because of how difficult it is to build a reputation and a name yeah. and name recognition, mm in every society, defamation has a certain bar yeah. when it comes to proving defamation in court. Mm. Because it's got to do with reputation. It's got to do with name recognition. Yeah. And we know how difficult that is to build, to build. especially yeah. in a society like ours. You want your name and your good name and your reputation to precede you wherever you go. So I think so. that's what Nick Papo was, was, was explaining, mm. that the court felt that the team which he had the plaintiffs had not adduced mm. enough evidence to meet that bar yeah. or to meet that standard set 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 in law and obviously as the counsel he disagrees and would want to test the law further go to the court for appeal mm. and if it doesn't well go to the uh, supreme, supreme court, court go to the apex court to as to as much as possible push that mm. i think that we need to move into a culture where that's why i have put i have a problem with politicians who um speak unguardedly yeah given the giving the yeah. opportunity giving the microphone you can engage in 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 and and i'm and i'm keenly following the i'm not digress but i'm keenly following the conservative leadership right. elections mm. which is now down to just two people in the, two UK. People in the uk you watch the debate it's banter mm. argument mm. but it's argument on substance yeah argument on data yeah it amazes me how they just rattle the data and the facts the facts 355,000 yeah. <laughs> people are on the mm. nhs they are paying this blah 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 because proper research has been yes, done and then in his den which mm. is which is sunak is just ditching mm. just that's the kind of politics that we need to get to yeah why you not sit down there and say this person is mm. uh, a, a thief this person mm. has done this this person has done that and make all sorts of unguarded allegations mm. On, on radio that is because people have not been taken on people are not really being punished for making the same on guarded yeah, allegations we, we, i mean we've had, we, we've cases, had that before we, but you how know, many you remember the case. exactly that's a, 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 a daily, and, uh, daily, daily guy, guy right? yes yes but so how many the, i think that we need to have a whole new question that's why for me even if i'm producing mm. people to come on our shows yeah i had an argument last wednesday over the person mm. to produce for point of view from a certain mm. i will People must debate issues especially without being without insulting. Mm. It doesn't add anything to the debate. Yeah. And this debate about nation building, mm -hmm. not about our private life. Exactly. So the discourse needs to be up there. Constructive. Constructive ideas, mm. not insults and yeah. attack on persons. Right. Let us know what you think. Zero five five zero five eight five eight three two. But stay with us on CNR Extra because still ahead. Police officer and a final year student of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology remanded for allegedly raping a first year student of the school. We'll bring you the details shortly. Stay with us. Life is too short, I know if you waste time. Oh. Where they up at this why or not they sleep make you wake up. Oh. Who they call me if you know me party, call me later. Oh. If your girlfriend no go go, call your side chick, it makes a link up. Oh. Eh. As I'm on a monthly buffet and I will cook your cake. Fine, fine, Good day energy, energy drink. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved.
Welcome back. This is CNR Extra on City TV. My name is Nana Tufuopwati and I'm in studio with Duke Mensa Opoku. And we've been looking at some of the stories that made it to a major news bulletin, CNR, right here on City TV. Let's go to the Ashanti region, a rather very disturbing story where a police officer and the final year student of the Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology allegedly raped a first year student of the institution. Still in the Ashanti region, the Asokoye Mampon District Court has remanded in the police custody a police officer, Lance Corporal Frank Idupoku, and a final year student of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kian USD, Joel Ose Owusu, for allegedly raping a first year student of the school. The head of the Ashanti Region Legal and Prosecutions, ACP Kofi Blagoji, has also disclosed to the news that the police officer involved has been interdicted. There is more in the following report. According to the police's charge sheet, the two persons last week Tuesday, 19th July 2022, took turns and forcibly raped a first-year student at a hostel at Bomso. The two persons, the police officer and the KNWST final year student, have been charged on two counts, conspiracy to commit rape and rape. Appearing before the Ascari Mampon District Court, the prosecutor, ACP Kofi Blagoji, said the victim, who deals in ladies' clothing, displayed some of the items on the internet for sale. He says the final year student, upon seeing the advert, contacted her and assured her of having similar ones, which she wants to supply to her for which she could make more profit. The complainant, then agreed to meet him, and he led her to his room under the pretext of showing her the clothes, but suddenly locked the door and put a key into his pocket. According to the prosecutor, ACP Kofi Blagoji, the final year student then told the victim that he's a scammer and that he will only let her leave the room after she undresses for him to take pictures and a video of her nakedness to be sent to his business partner abroad for money out of which the complainant will have 30% share. Out of fear, the complainant told the police that she reluctantly obliged and removed her clothes where the final year student took pictures and videos of her nudity and she was further compelled to recite some words which the first accused person sent to the partner for the payment of the money. The complainant further told the police that a final year student, who is the first accused person, then ordered her to perform oral sex on him, which was videoed, and then went ahead to have unprotected sex with her. After satisfying himself, he then went out of the room, locked the door, but returned with a second accused person, the police officer, who was armed with a pistol, whom he introduced as his friend and business partner. The final year student left the room as it was left with a complainant and a police officer, who also took his stand in having sexual intercourse with her. After the police officer had also forcibly had sex with the complainant, the first accused person then returned to the room and forcibly administered Lydia contraceptive pills to the complainant in order to help prevent any unwanted pregnancy, after which the complainant was sent out of the room traumatized. The victim went home and later confided in the university authorities at KNUST who decided to report to the police on 21st July 2022. On 22nd July 2022, KNUST authorities arrested a final year student and handed him over to the police. The police say in his investigation's caution statement, the final year student admitted the offense and mentioned the police officer as his accomplice who was arrested the same day. Appearing before the Ascariman Pond District Court, the court remanded the two persons to reappear on 9th August 2022. ACP Kofi Blagoji says the police are liaising with the authorities of KNUSD to offer psychological support to the victim. He also noted that the police administration will not shield any officer who commits such an act. We arraigned accused persons before the magistrate court. You know, when it comes to issues of rape and defilement, uh, we normally put it before the court of first instance, which is the magistrate court. And then uh, after we seek our, our remand, then we file the docket to the attorney general's office for their perusal and advice. And then they do the computers and then send it to maybe the high court for the trial. So today we're in court with the accused persons. 
and then their lawyers also appear before the court seeking bail for them but we vehemently opposed to the bail application and we give our reasons to the court so the court went ahead and remanded them for two weeks so we had to appear before the court on the 9th of august what is still this is that, has it been interdicted yes as, as we speak now it has also been interdicted yes and as i made you aware that the police administration is not prepared to shelter anybody who want to drag the image of the police service into the mud or into disrepute we are working hard to raise our image globally so any police officer that uh, we want to drag us into mayhem the administration will never spare you this is exactly what we did to, to borrow off the words of them and they just spoke i mean these people should not be spared of course i mean if they meet the the threshold mm. required of a sexual offense mm. of course they have to suffer the consequences but i i i'm i get amazed at the kind of things police officers these days do yeah from robbery mm -hmm. and now to rape even disrespecting a superior in public in public i mean it's a police service needs to mm. take a look a second look at its at its training models and recruitment its, and its training procedures and recruitment yeah. of course very important mm. uh, training procedures and recruitment because i mean if someone I always say that if someone who has been sacked from three different senior high schools can find himself <laughs> in, the police, in the police service. What happened to background mm. checks? What yeah. happened to due diligence mm. of these people before they, they joined the police, the police service? I think it's unfortunate. Um, uh, I learned that this morning the IT, I, IGP has interdicted the, the, the police the officer involved. Officer, the officer mm. involved. And once you wear that uniform, there's a certain level of dignity, integrity, yeah. responsibility. That's expected of you. The yeah. least you should be doing is engaging is in, engaging some in of such activities. It's, it's terrible. Very, very terrible. terrible. Anyways, uh, thank you very much, uh, Duke Menso. Poke. Very insightful there. Very educative, of course. Uh, Welcome. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. And of course, it's always a pleasure uh, having you tune in to, to City TV and, of course, joining us here on CNR Extra. My name is Nanatu Fuwa Boateng. Have a great weekend.